All right, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Bamboo Lab H2D, which is the larger form factor Bamboo Lab printer that everyone has been dreaming of since they, uh, they first spent $1,500 on a Bamboo Lab X1C. We had this big leak that came out last weekend. We know the print volume. We've got 340 by 320 by 325. Not quite as big as the Creality K2 Plus. Oh, by the way, we have a, a release date. They're saying on March 25th. One of the weird things that people have noticed is it looks like there's a laser module on the top. And we've got green tinted laser glass. In terms of the kinematics, it's a Core XY printer slash laser cutter. It's got two print heads on the top here. It's using three lead screws, just like all of their other machines. We've got a viewing window on the side here, but not on the opposite side it looks like because that's blocked by a fan. Overall, it looks like a pretty interesting machine. Here's another hint up here. It looks like this says AMS HT, and we've got a temperature reading right here saying 34 degrees. So it looks like it's got a heated filament storage system. That'll be great for materials like PETG or polycarbonate or any of these higher temperature materials that you typically have to dry out before printing with them. Another big example is nylon and carbon fiber reinforced nylon. A lot of times you'll have to dry those out. Having all that functionality built into this AMS Pro, this AMS HT unit that'll be able to dry things out actively, that's pretty cool. So yeah, you've got the bigger print volume. It's got the same kind of design language. Uh, uh, as the older Bamboo Lab machines. It's got the X1C-like touchscreen up at the top here. However, they have assimilated some new ideas. I like to think of the Bamboo Lab as like the Borg. There's this ruthless force that's going around and absorbing other people's ideas and uh, uh, products into their own 3D maker cube. You know, after all, the Borg love cubes. So does Bamboo Lab. All of their printers look like cubes. And one of the most blatant examples of this is this dual print head design. Dual print heads is nothing new. All of the Bamboo Lab shills are going to be coming out with their videos. They're going to be telling you that it's the best thing since laser cut bread. That, uh, you know, everybody's going to want one of these things. And uh, yeah, you should go out and get a second mortgage on your house to afford one of these because it's probably going to be over $2,000. Especially if you're adding all these accessories on here. You know, I'm thinking maybe $2,500 to $3,000. you got to pay that Bamboo Lab premium tax. Especially if you're adding all these add-ons like the laser module and the high temperature AMS unit. You know, they're just basically giving you all these uh, ways to ratchet up the price. But yeah, all those videos are going to be coming out March 25th at 3 p.m. Central European time. I don't know why they're not using American time, America. For those of you who are living in America, that's going to be about 10 a.m. Eastern time and 7 a.m. Western time. So everybody, you gotta wake up early, steal your mom's credit card and buy one of these Bamboo Lab printers. But yeah, this uh, dual print head thing is nothing new. When I was first learning 3D printing some 10 to 15 years ago, the printer that I was using back then had dual print heads. In that instance, it was a Stratasys machine that had soluble support material and ABS. Uh, that was a really common thing to be printing with back then. And it also meant Stratasys could sell you a bunch of extras in terms of like a soluble support material bath thing and special soluble support material dissolving solution. And the soluble support material itself, which was like some $500 to $1,000 a spool. Things have come down in price quite a bit since then. Um, also, you've got the LED light bar taken directly off of the Prusa Core 1. Uh, real classy there. You've got the side viewing window. Uh, you don't have a side viewing window on, the, on all three sides, but at least you've got an extra view on the side there. I really think that that's probably one of the best areas to get a good view of your print as it's going. Um, so, good to see that. However, your visibility is going to be somewhat affected by this dark green glass. Now they're going to have a lot of light in here, so you'll probably be able to see what's going on for the most part. But that green glass is going to give you some kind of color shift and kind of distort your vision of what you're printing a little bit. And about this picture that's been leaked, I find it a little fishy. I think this is possibly something that Bamboo Lab leaked themselves. They were like, hey, we need to do a soft launch of the, uh, the stuff that's going on here. You can see this is a phone that I have not seen in the US. This looks like something that's maybe a Chinese market. Uh, type of thing. So yeah, it's it might be from Bamboo Lab directly. I have a hard time believing that anyone that signed the NDA with Bamboo Lab is going to leak something like this. And a new machine launch like this is exactly what Bamboo Lab needs, especially after they've had some negative press from large YouTubers like Jeff Greeling, who is like really into 
baking pies or something. Uh, Lewis Rossman, the humble Mac repair salesman. And Linus Tech Tips, the professional paid reviewer that likes to drop things. All of them have released videos kind of questioning what the heck is going on with Bamboo Lab in terms of their privacy policy and cutting off compatibility with certain products like certain things from Biku or Big Tree Tech. They had some products that were compatible with Bamboo Lab machines that were making them easier to use and enhancing the user interface. But since they did this new update that broke compatibility, like those things from Big Tree Tech and also from Orca Slicer, uh, this is hilarious. Uh, this is Bamboo Lab right here. Uh, very strange, uh, very strange search engine optimization that's going on right now. What in the world is this? You type in Maker World and uh, you get Grant's face popping up. Very, very cool. But anyways, you've got Bamboo Lab taking this increasingly closed ecosystem approach. They want to give you the warm embrace of their ecosystem. They want to put a warm pillow over your face and make sure you never leave them. Just for instance, if you take a look at uh, Maker World, I can't... Uh, this is weird. It, it's kind of forcing me to log in. Huh, maybe that's trying to export it directly to my printer over the cloud, so it needs me to log in in order to do that. But it looks like I can still download the STL files like this. Interesting. Okay, well anyways, uh, I'm getting a little worried about what's going on with that ecosystem. You know, they're maintaining the ability to lock everything down, which, you know, some could say that Prusa is doing the same thing with their system, however they're generally a lot more open source friendly so I'm not so worried about that. Bamboo Lab, I would be a little concerned about them doing further lockdowns of their equipment and you know basically locking you out of being able to do basic repairs. You know are they gonna do that? Let's give it another year and find out. But there definitely is precedent from other companies that are very uh, you know using the same arguments of needing to lock things down for your safety and security and not letting you use your machines in the way that you want to also if we go to maker world if we click this we get options to open it in bamboo studio and nothing else versus if we go to printables we click download we can download um, and all these we can also click this to directly open and slice it in prusa slicer they've also got compatibility with orca slicer cura and bamboo studio so, you know, Prusa generally is a lot more open to other companies. Bamboo Lab is very much, you know, they want to keep you and smother you in their love. And in the name of safety and security, what could be safer or more secure than adding a laser to your machine that's capable of causing retina damage if it shines directly into your eyes. It can also burn and melt things and even light things on fire. Uh, maybe there's going to be some smarts on the machine to make sure that it doesn't do that, but uh, that's always a risk that you'll have when you're heating wood or other type of flammable materials beyond their ignition points. So, uh, you know, maybe it's not about safety and security, it's more about selling things, selling features, selling printers, selling data. Um, I don't know if they're selling data, but, you know, they're definitely using it internally to make a lot of decisions on, on their machines and do product improvement and stuff. So yeah, this addition of a laser cutter module is really unexpected. I think it's kind of cool because you're essentially getting the functionality of a laser cutter without having any extra space taken up in your office. Now I previously took a look at one of the machines from Snapmaker, I think it was the A350. It was a decent machine, but ultimately it wasn't a very good 3D printer, and I don't think it was going to make a very good laser cutter either because it was a very compromised design and it wasn't really particularly good at anything. What I'm hoping that Bamboo Lab have done here is made a really good 3D printer, just, you know, focusing on getting that FDM 3D printer filament based model making down really good, and then just slapping a laser on as an upsell opportunity, because uh, that's going to make for a much more compelling product than something that isn't a particularly good 3D printer and isn't a particularly good laser cutter. In this case, I think you're going to have a great 3D printer, but uh, an okay laser cutter. We'll have to wait and see how it all works out. Just be a little cautious because all the Bamboo Lab shills are going to be telling you that this is the best thing since laser cut bread. And in reality, it's probably just going to be an okay, smallish laser cutter. And because it's small, you're not going to be able to cut out large objects. You're not going to be able to do really big stuff, but you'll be able to do some smaller stuff. This dual print head in combination with the AMS unit. That's pretty interesting because what that's going to allow them to do is basically, if you have a two color part, it's going to have 
very little waste compared to the previous system because it's not going to have to purge to switch materials inside the same hot end. If you have to only print two colors, you're only going to have to do a little minimal amount of purging before you switch colors instead of having to purge like multiple centimeters of filament through the machine to be able to get it to switch colors completely. In this case, you're just going to purge a little bit to prime the nozzle and then start printing with the other color. So it'll be a lot less wasteful for two color prints. For three color prints, you're still going to have to activate the AMS and actively be swapping that filament back and forth and doing a, a decent amount of purging. However, you'll have less waste because if you're doing a three color print, it'll be as if you were doing a two color print on the previous system because one of the nozzles will stay as a constant color and the other nozzle will be alternating back and forth and in the process of purging it'll produce waste just like the previous AMS system did. So to calculate the amount of waste material you get from purging it'll basically be the number of colors that you're using minus one and that's the equivalent amount of waste that you'll produce when compared to the previous AMS. If that doesn't make sense to you, then you might not be good at math, but that's okay. If you're printing with four colors, you're only going to have to be changing three colors out. If you're printing with two colors, you'll have to do zero color changes. So it'll be like you're printing with one color. Um, yeah, and and also having these two nozzles means you can use true multi-material printing. Uh, you're not just going to be switching between different colors of the same material. You can really switch between like ABS and PETG within the same print if you wanted to. And in terms of air quality and safety, I really hope they put some really big filters on this. And whatever size filter they're using for this machine, I wouldn't trust it. I would always want to exhaust any type of laser cutter fumes out the window and into the great outdoors where it can uh, not be your problem anymore. Because 3D printers produce a little bit of detectable uh, airborne emissions. However, laser cutters produce orders of magnitude more smoke and you really got to filter that stuff out or eject it outside or something because uh, you don't want to be breathing that kind of smoke. A lot of the times it's toxic materials, like especially if you're cutting acrylic or any type of plastic. If you're cutting leather, some of the tans that are used in leather are really harmful to your respiratory system. So you just got to be really careful with what you're deciding to print and making sure that you have adequate ventilation, that it's actually blowing all the air outside and getting it away from your workspace. Also, something you bamboo tards might need to know is that even after you've laser cut some things, they can continue to off-gas. For example, acrylic, after you've you know cut out some acrylic, you don't just turn the printer off and you're like, okay, I'm done printing, I'm done cutting things, let's just, uh, we're done here. You actually have to continue ventilating those parts because they're going to continue to off-gas and release toxic fumes into the air, even after you've completed all your laser cutting and stuff. And also, I'd be concerned about doing a lot of laser cutting in a machine like this because it can fog up your cameras and stuff. But then again, uh, there are companies that produce laser cutters that have cameras and other type of sensors, and it's not that big of a deal. At the end of the day, I think most people are going to use this primarily as a 3D printer for the occasional laser cutting job just to kind of extend the capabilities of what they can do in their, their shop because having that laser cutter module isn't going to take up any extra space in your workplace. Uh, it's not going to take up extra desk space. Uh, the print area is quite small for a laser cutter. We're looking at 350 by 320, I think, in terms of the laser cutter area. No, I think it's 340 by 320. Can't quite make out what it says there, but it's pretty small in terms of a laser cutter. Most laser cutters, you're looking at like the very smallest entry level laser cutters are like 200 by 300. And then you it goes way up from there. Like you can get laser cutters that are 300 by 400. That's another pretty common size. You can get 400 by 600. Um, so yeah, laser cutters are generally much larger in terms of their working area than 3D printers. But the advantage here is that Bamboo Lab is probably going to be selling you blanks of material that fit perfectly inside of these machines. It's actually a pretty smart move, you know, with uh, 3D printers you make a lot of money selling people filament. With these laser cutters you're going to make a lot of money selling people blanks of material that they can just, uh, just sheets that they can put right into the machine. And then they'll probably have some smart stuff like cameras to be able to detect what's in the workspace and let you position all of your little cutout pieces properly. So I do think, so it's pretty clever of Bamboo Lab to be taking a step into the laser cutter market because companies like Creality, Xtools, Orter, you know, there's a bunch of companies that are making laser cutters and 3D printers 
And uh, there's a lot of crossover in terms of what a laser cutter can do and what a 3D printer can do. In terms of large format multicolor printers, it's not going to be as large as the K2 Plus. That's been my go-to printer for a lot of the stuff I've been doing lately. And uh, just look at that, just to prove my point, you know, Creality is still working on laser cutter products. So uh, Bamboo Lab is stepping into that territory. It's a pretty interesting idea and a good way to get more customers into your ecosystem. It's still not going to be as large as the Prusa XL. Uh, Prusa XL is going to be a little bit larger. If we do the 5 tool head version, then we're still looking at um, less material waste. Because with the Bamboo Lab system, you can switch between two colors and have very little waste. With the XL, you can switch between up to five colors and have very little waste. And uh, yeah, it makes me wonder if Prusa is going to add a laser cutter module to their XL. I mean, it's a tool changer. It's not a 3D printer print head changer. You can put any type of tool on there and maybe they could uh, enter into the laser market by just having a little laser slicer print head thing. Could be interesting to see. Maybe we'll keep an eye on that and see if that ends up becoming a thing in the future. I generally don't like doing laser cutter content. I get a lot of emails from companies asking me to review their laser cutters and I almost always say no. Uh, just because I don't like it. It makes too much smoke. Uh, you don't have a lot of flexibility in terms of what you can make. If I wanted a laser cutter, I'd want to get something that could cut out metal parts. And in those cases, I'd probably just have Send Cut Send make them for me, which is a really great website. You can get your parts laser cut really quick. They don't do the cleanest work, but uh, in terms of getting quick and dirty prototypes done, it's very, very good. And yeah, it kind of is just branching out from 3D printing because the 3D printer market is only so big. You grow into another type of technology and all of a sudden you can sell more machines and consumables and expand your product line. So Bamboo Lab is taking all this money that they're making from people buying their stuff and investing it into other markets. Pretty smart idea. Okay, so if you want to go buy yourself a Bamboo Lab H2D, go ahead and click my affiliate link in the description down below. All of my best fans who watched to the end of the video, I'd like to give you a big thanks. And all of you Bamboo Tards that came to this video to leave angry comments, I'll meet you in the comment section down below. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.